So, in this one, yes, we are gonna talk about lifts. Two post lifts, four post lifts. So if you're considering uh, getting a lift for your personal use, that's what this, this video is gonna kind of be about. Uh, obviously, commercial interest and applications aren't gonna apply here. I've had a lot of different lifts, uh, many two posts, four posts. I've even had a scissor lift like I'm showing here on the uh, screen right now. So I'm gonna kind of through that process of owning the different ones, I've, I've come to some conclusions as to why I think that if you can only have one lift, if you can only have one option, that I think a four post usually fits the bill better um, despite what some people may think. So uh, that's not to say that I don't think that some people should own a two post. I think there's definitely a group of people even if you can only have one lift, you should go with a two post. So I'm gonna make that clear in this video. So stick around, you're watching Night Drive TV. I always wanted to build fast cars, so self-taught I started with engine swaps, composites in my apartment to multiple shops, tuning, fabrication, and more. 10 years later, the big time, SEMA, Speed TV, I climbed from nothing, but I lost it all. This is my new ride, Night Drive TV. So that's right guys thank you for uh you know taking an interest in the video i hope i can help you out with some information in my experience if you haven't watched night drive tv before uh we have a lot of corvettes on this channel c4s c5 c6s um we also do some off-roading with uh the tahoe gmt 800 platform so i make some parts for those cars and things like that so if you haven't seen night drive tv before and you're interested in those vehicles uh consider maybe subbing checking out my other videos but at least throw a like and a comment. I always enjoy that. It helps the video. So let me get to uh, the basic breakdown comparison. Maybe you've figured out some of the basics between these two lifts. So I'm going to kind of give you just a basic breakdown. So let's start um, with just understanding the differences between a two post and a four post and what you need in your uh, position, uh, your residence, your garage, etc. Okay, so first let's just kind of do a basic breakdown. So some of the major differences I will say between a two post and a four post, uh, let's talk about cost. Uh, a two post tends to be cheaper upfront versus a four post and that attracts a lot of people to the potential of buying a two post. Uh, next thing would be space. And so looking at a two post, it kind of appears like a two post just occupies less space. It seems more compact. People with a tight garage might be more tempted to go with a two post um, because they feel like it just occupies less physical space and maybe gives them an opportunity to, uh, you know, work in tight at quarters and things like that and still have the ability to lift the car. That is something to consider. Um, but what I would just kind of add in is some of that space is not real um, in terms of how wide you have to put the two posts and concrete um, considerations, especially in a two car garage, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. So sometimes when you're looking at the lift and you're thinking, hey, that doesn't take up too much space, what you may find is once you go to install it, it takes up more space and it's not going to physically um, sit where you want it to. And so we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. So the four post um, in, the, in the opposing sense, physically is a larger uh, unit, but uh, because it doesn't really have the restrictions in some ways that a two post may have, you may actually consume less space and get better use for your limited space with the four posts. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, next thing, let's talk about power. So two post lifts are always going to use like a 220 uh, outlet where you're gonna need like a 30 amp breaker or, or better. Um, as to where the four posts, the basic parking lifts, um, these are lifts that are not going to be um, used in like commercial applications where they're going up and down all day. Uh, the four posts that typically you're going to buy are considered a parking lift. And, and that's not to say they can't go up and down pretty frequently, um, which I've used mine in that way. But it's just they're slower because they're 110, so they're going to go up and down a little bit slower. And so for a high volume shop or a turn and burn type of place, they wouldn't want a slow lift like that. So always consider your power. Some people only have 100 amp service at their house. You may not have room uh, for that additional breaker. Obviously you can piggyback off to, uh, you know, other things or split an outlet or do, you know, something like that. But uh, that may be something you have to think about. 
so uh, obviously other considerations come down to um, the weight of the vehicle. You can see these two posts, some are 9,000 pounds, some are more. Same with the four post. Uh, this particular one is an 8,000 pound. It's kind of the lightest one I've ever personally had. I've had like 9,000 usually, but um, you know, typically that's kind of your starting weight range. Uh, and so that kind of dictates, obviously, if you have bigger equipment dualies, you know, like 3,500 pickups and things like that, this, this whole conversation kind of changes because you have to go with a lot more robust lift in both cases. So I would say this more applies to, to car people, light truck use, uh, things like that. So with that being said, this is the basic breakdown. Now, let me kind of talk about the advantages and disadvantages and things that I think a lot of people are not going to be aware of until they physically own it or, you know, learn as they go. So let's talk about that. I've got the two posts. As you can see, I can't move it. It's anchored to the ground. And so this is one of the major differences. Uh, two posts uh, very much depend on the anchors in the concrete. Um, your safety and your ability to use a two post lift uh, effectively and uh, again, safely and confidently really comes down to uh, the quality of your concrete, uh, the positioning of the lift, and things like that. As swear, a four post, if you'll see here, I'm pushing out of the way because it's on the casters. I can put that four post anywhere in this garage that I want to. Um, so that means if I want to put it into a parking storage uh, type of scenario, I can put it against the wall. I can put a Corvette on it, put a Corvette in the air, put another Corvette underneath it, and just kind of leave it off to the side. If I want to position that lift to do um, work and I can put it close to my toolbox, put it on the ground, obviously, and I can have a lot of room around it. So if you have a two car garage, something like that, to where you're like, well, typically I want to keep it here for storage. If you did get into a major, you know, I really want to work on the car, you could put it in the center and uh, basically work on it, have your whole garage, you know, for a couple of days until the wife gets mad or whatever. So that's a big advantage for four posts. It's something I've always felt was very important. Um, but then you might be thinking, well, you know, the four posts are sitting on the tires. What about suspension? What about brakes? And with a two post, this is where people kind of get into this idea that, you know, it seems like a two post, I'm not occupying any critical space. My whole drivetrain's accessible, exhaust, all my suspension's dangling. So of course I want a two post because a four post is gonna restrict me. That's not true. And there is something additional you should own, whether you have a two post or a four post. And I would say it's actually more critical if you have a two post to own these, but it's a, it's a pairing for either lift. And it really enhances the capability of a four post while it saves your life on a two post. So let me show you what that is. Okay, so what I'm gonna talk about here, is I'm lifting it up for you. This is basically like a big jack stand. And so, what you'll see here is I can uh, hold this, it's a screw type, so it, you know, basically you use this rod to elevate it. And then there's a pin system. I just moved, I have to find my pins, but obviously I can raise it a quick amount of height and then I use this for fine adjustment. Now, why do you want this with a two post? Well, with a two post, when you have those two arms and this, this would be a top view, you have the vehicle placed here, you have the two arms holding it. Sometimes people will really be, you know, grabbing on uh, tough to, you know, a crank pulley bolt or, you know, a suspension bolt. It's like really hardened on there and you're really hanging on it. Well, what's going to be happening is number one, you're going to get a lot of rocking and that's going to be forward to backwards. You're going to have these, these posts here, you're going to have the vehicle and it's going to want to rock. And so what, what you're doing is you're putting a lot of pressure on your anchors. Um, you're putting yourself in a, a real potential position of danger especially if it's a long vehicle. Um, another, another scenario, and so these are stabilizing, to be clear. So this would be, a, uh, you would put this on the front, maybe one on the rear. And so what you're essentially doing is you're, you're grabbing the vehicle by the sides, and then you're having stabilizing positions in the front and the back. Another scenario to where these are very important is, and it's a critical area where people have died under two post lifts or have gotten seriously injured, um, is, the removal of a heavy drivetrain component. Uh, typically the motor, or in some cases, uh, the rear end and a mid-engine car, things like that. So they pick it up, um, they do a procedure to where they drop out a significant amount of weight out of the car, and what happens is the center of gravity of the car moves, and what it does is it tumbles off the lift. So without these, uh, do not own a two-post lift without these. I will tell you right now, it is super dangerous. Uh, and I, the amount of people that I see not using these, 
Um, obviously, when you get into full service shops and people that have commercial bend packs, they're much more robust. Um, you know, they can get away with it. And, and they're also, they're doing it day to day. I think people in the hobbyist position, home mechanics, they're going to be, you know, more distracted, a little less mindful of what they're doing and things like that. So if you were at a house with a two post, get one of these. So why do I want this for a four post lift? This converts a four post lift, um, into just a variety of new functions. And basically it's because you could put this under the four post lift and you can lower the four post lift and raise the rear suspension. I would grab a few positions to where I'll just lift that rear tire off like you're seeing here. And that allows me to work on rear suspension, work on brakes. I still have access to all my exhaust, a lot of major drivetrain components, tranny, things like that could still come out the center uh, of most four post lifts unless you have really wide transmission braces and things like that. But I have generally found that with a four post, if you work with these, you can work around 90%, uh, 90 plus percent of the issues with the, with the big ramps on a four post blocking. So um, I really think this is what has led me to really favor a four post uh, in if I can only have one. Obviously a two post um, with Corvettes, dropping an entire drivetrain out to where you, you keep the motor, torque tube, uh, transmission all intact and your suspension still intact and you drop the entire thing out, that is critical for a two post. Uh, a four post, I, I have never tried it, but I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be very difficult. There's gonna be some compromises. I think you could still do it um, with maybe four of these or some kind of weird combination, but it's where you really wanna have a two post. But generally speaking, I think for most people's use, a four post is going to satisfy you much more quickly and I'm not done as to why. Let's talk about the anchoring system on the two post and let me talk about the real advantages uh, that I see with when it comes to lifting the vehicle. All right, so I'm gonna kind of position myself right between these two uprights. So I think you want these directly up and down but actually you want them uh, slightly outward and so leveling and installing a two post uh, is very risky on your own. I, I know I see people doing it quite often and some people are very capable and they do their research and they understand you have to shim these posts exactly. Um, you need a, a certain amount of tilt out. You need uh, them to be very level and vertical. That way all the weight distribution is where it needs to be and you're not putting excessive amounts of stress into the concrete. Now, in the case of this particular two post lift, I'm gonna show you that whoever installed this they probably almost put themselves in a very bad position and this lift has been moved. Let me show you. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the former holes in location of this two post lift. And if we come over here, you can see the holes there as well. So I have checked these, these uprights. Um, they are not exactly tilted out as much as they should be, um, but they are pretty well positioned. And then I noticed this bar here, which initially kind of concerned me. Um, they're obviously reinforcing it. And so I'm like, why'd they do that? So if we take a look at the holes now, with a two post lift, typically the manufacturers for like a 9,000 pound two post, want you to have at least four and three quarter inches or so of concrete depth thickness. Um, you can do a drill test, you can figure this out. Obviously the type of concrete um, you know, it depends on how your slab's laid. I'm not a concrete guy, but I know that there are, um, you know, high uh, uh, 3,000, 4,000 PSI um, type of uh, strength concrete. Uh, you really should have knowledge, uh, more knowledge than I have of concrete because I'm not a concrete guy, but this is why I was all, always pay shops to put these in. Uh, we didn't have any issues here. Now we have a little, what looks like a crack, but it's just kind of mostly on the surface, probably from the drilling process. But... If we take a look over here, now immediately, uh, this is where if you're considering a two post, you really have to consider where the two post is gonna be located. Now we see we have a crack in the slab here and where they had it located was right here. And we have some holes, but here's what looks pretty concerning as we had a hole to hole crack transferring. And there's a crack here, it's harder to see, it's connected. And there's a crack here beginning, but it was trying to connect and it did eventually connect around the side and to the backside. So all this was coming up and it was moving the concrete here quite a bit. And so this is something that, you know, you could have it installed. 
you could feel like you did a great job and as you're loading it up and you're putting yourself underneath it um, you just don't want to have a, a sudden catastrophic failure of the slab so this is where you have to consider if you're going to get a, a two post lift the proximity to the edges of the slab um, are also an issue so if you have a two car garage and you got one slab here and you got one slab there notice here how you're not going to fit it within the width of one slab usually. So there's gonna to have to be some compromise made. And so if you have a two car garage, you may run out of room. And so this is something to consider. Okay, so on the four post side, now I have the four posts currently on the casters. Uh, most of these four post lifts will come with this caster kit. This is something you put in place temporarily, which allows you to move it around. Now you do see there are anchor holes uh, available. So if you wanted to anchor this um, for you know, a permanent installation, maybe there's code and whatever you're doing, uh, you can anchor these, but they are not required to be anchored. Uh, they are stable on their own. Uh, they will lift the car in the air safely. You're in no danger. Uh, these are much, much safer. So if you have compromises in your space, it gives you a lot more options than the two post does. But let's talk about the kind of approach height and the, the ability for a lowered car to get onto here. If you look at this, this is about four inches tall uh, off the ground, but the ramps uh, give you an ability. I can get anything lowered uh, onto here very easily. My Corvettes, even lowered Corvettes, they drive right on here. And so this is gonna present uh, a challenge for certain vehicles. Um, you're gonna have to use lifting blocks or ramps. You're gonna have to do something physically to get the car kind of in the air to a particular step and then uh, be able to swing the arms underneath. So. Um, in, in terms of if you're, you know, if you have a car, you, you have a noise, you're like, man, what is that? Uh, you can throw a vehicle up on the lift here very quickly. Yeah, so as you can see, I mean, a couple quick moves, the car's on there. Now the angle has told me that coming around that other lift, I'm probably gonna want to uh, do a little readjustment, but obviously um, with that said, the car is ready to go up and uh, we have no issues. Um, it's very quick, it's very clean, and it's very safe. And that's uh, one of the biggest reasons that I like the four post lift. So folks, uh, obviously, you know, I think it's, I've made it clear um, which one I think I prefer. Now, I did mention the scissor lift in the beginning of the video. Um, that is actually the most expensive lift I've ever owned. Um, the scissor lift was great. Um, honestly, um, it kind of combines the, the ease of loading uh, that you have with the four post with the minimal uh, invasiveness that you have with the two post. And even then some, because obviously you have no restrictions for the doors. Uh, personally, if I were doing a permanent installation um, in a garage, I think I would definitely revert back to um, that type of lift. Um, that being said, there's a lot of structure underneath next to you. Um, obviously there's a locking system. It, it always felt very safe, um, but it has its quirks too. Um, it is the most expensive. It's extremely difficult to move. It is the densest, uh, piece of weight ever. I actually moved my scissor lift from Georgia to Las Vegas when I first moved here and I ended up selling it because I ran into some financial trouble, but um, I did move it and I moved it with a forklift in Georgia and I readjusted and dropped it off with a forklift in um, Las Vegas. Now that, that lift doesn't require any of the concrete requirements yet again. I mean, you do have anchors with that when you do have to anchor that. It's very wise to anchor it, but the anchors are not as robust anywhere near uh, that you would use on a two post lift. So my true scaling, um, let me kind of wrap this up with who should buy what and what lift is good for what scenario and what's my true thoughts overall on the three lifts. And so I'm gonna put it like this, a two post lift, a four post lift, they, they both have their place. Um, I think for 90% of jobs, if you're a hobbyist, if you wanna stay safe, 
uh, if you need flexibility in your garage, if you can't truly just commit a space uh, solely to that lift and not hurt the rest of your space and hurt the rest of your life. Um, I, I think if you need any flexibility whatsoever, go for the four post. It's safer. You don't have to think about um, you know, the car coming off on top of you. You don't have to think of the weight and balance. You don't have to think a lot of things. And with those jacks, uh, the functionality is there. Um, I feel very unrestricted by these. You can open the doors. Um, it's just quick to get things done. And uh, I think it's super convenient. Obviously you can double it as, you know, double stacking your parking. So a lot of guys use it for this reason. Who should get a two post lift? Um, if you're into restorations, if you're into deep projects, if you're, if you're someone who tends to, you know, do highly advanced type of uh, work on, on a car, maybe as a hobbyist, you have a, a particular restoration build or something you just really do intense work on. I think a two post, you're, you're to the level that you probably have the tooling uh, and you have the car that requires probably a two post because it's, it's minimally invasive. And if you're gonna go two post, I would look at asymmetric um, just because you can open the doors but again, be sure about your concrete. Use a professional installer always. Um, I, I really rarely, unless you're, you're very confident in your skills, um, very confident in yourself, um, it's just better to use the guys that do it all day, every day. You know, these guys come over and put these lifts up in a couple hours. It's brainless to them. They know all the things to look for. Um, and so it, it's just better that way. And a company is being represented. So they're gonna give you, you know, there's liabilities there and things like that. So. I just feel like you're super safe when you get a company to install it for you. Um, that's a two post guy. I think it's probably 10% of hobbyists really should go two post versus four post. Um, inevitably, my favorite lift ever has been uh, the scissor lift. I think because, like I said, it's the, it's the combination of both. I can do major drivetrain work. Um, I can lift off a body. I hadn't done it with mine, but I'm trying to think. Um, I could lift it off, it would be trapped inside. I could separate it. I really feel like I could make it work. Again, a two post would be a little bit more convenient in certain areas, but overall, I could, you could drive right on that. I had ramps built. I could pull my lowered Corvette on it. Um, I could get right up on it. A couple pucks right under the locations that Corvettes need. I could put it up in the air. Um, even with these two posts, um, you know, with Corvettes, because of the lift locations, uh, the pads and things on these really don't work. You have to swing the arms underneath the car and just put a rubber pad kind of on the arm. And so, you know, it's just, you have to be careful with the two posts. That's just, uh, that's something I can't stress enough. Two posts are the most dangerous lifts um, without question, uh, shy of maybe some kind of crazy uh, side lifting, you know, thing you buy from China or Alibaba or something. But um, overall, um, a four post lift is a great tool. It's a great asset. Um, they can be disassembled and carried out. A lot of times, big two posts, I mean, they're a nightmare. Uh, this one's kind of small, but I've had larger ones and just the columns alone are so much weight that if you wanted to sell it and get it out of there, it's very tough. A four post lift, you'd be surprised how many pieces you can break it down. Two guys can truly break it down and get it out for the most part. So I hope it helps guys. Uh, I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, I think for the most part, I covered it all and I hope uh, that it's given you maybe some insight and somebody that's had real experience owning these. Um, always, always, I will say, if I can only have one lift, it's going to be a four post all the time. Um, trying to think off the top of my head if there's anything I missed. I think somebody's probably going to be tempted to ask, can you put the car on the four post, put the casters down and wheel the whole thing around? I've never tried. I don't know that the casters are rated for that weight. They're pretty beefy. They're from China. I don't know. Um, both of these have locking systems. One last thing I do want to say is locking systems. Uh, some lifts have air locks. Some lifts, usually the base lifts have um, non-air locks, basically cable operated locking systems. That's what you want if you don't want to have a compressor. Honestly, I've had um, lifts with air locks and I feel like sometimes they were a little bit more problematic. You have to be very consciously aware of all the locks being disengaged. You have to watch the car move and look for any, any of the locks hanging up to where, which could start to twist things. Um, that was something that would happen with um, the scissor lift. Those two pads were completely independent of each other. If one locking system didn't disengage, it would literally get to the, it would keep going down. And so there, were, there was an issue there. You know, all these things, these major tools, when you're putting, you know, a 3,200 pound or, or even more car above your head, um, you, you want to feel comfortable. And all of this is an acquired comfort. And so being under a two post, 
Um, it's not comfortable for most people in the beginning. You, you learn to trust it. Um, but like I said, using all the safety measures you can is super important. And, you know, the last thing you want is to have, you know, just a hobby lift in your house and, and you don't want your wife or kids to come out and you have a car on top of you. I mean, four posts for most guys, you can get most of the work done. There's accessories for these. Uh, even in the center rails, you can add another hydraulic lift. I showed you the option with the jacks, but you can put a hydraulic lift in the center that'll actually lift up on the suspension points. So, I mean, you could potentially get all four wheels off using uh, one of the hydraulic pieces, which are about 900 bucks usually, or 1100, somewhere in there, and then using those jacks. So th there's just a ton of options. And uh, I don't know, guys, I really tried to package it for you. I hope you liked the video. Leave me a comment if I miss anything, I'll answer you. I check all the comments all the time. As always, thank you for watching Night Drive TV. We have SEMA coming up very soon. Um, I always put out an all Corvette video. I did that one last year, it's hit 300,000 views. Um, I, I rush in there on day one, get all the Corvettes, everything I can get. So we're going to be visiting with uh, Jim Rob Racing, um, and he is uh, got a C5. He competes in the Optima um, Invitational, basically. He's gotten the invitation to come to Vegas. I think we're going to get with him. Uh, he has a Night Drive TV uh, headlights, so it's kind of a little connection. A little piece of Night Drive TV at SEMA this year, uh, not much. But uh, other than that, um, shout out to uh, Pat out in Lancaster, Lancaster. Pennsylvania. Um, talked to him quite a bit. I talked to quite a few of you guys, um, Ray down in Florida. Um, I've talked to several of you guys out in New York, New Jersey, things like that. Lots of calls, things like that. I always appreciate it. Um, we are back in production. I'm just kind of wrapping up the Night Drive TV thing right now. So um, we're obviously back in production. I moved. Um, everything settled and we're getting everything in place. Um, got a lot of stuff I'm going to try and cram into the end of the year. But lots of videos coming, guys. New products, lots of stuff. Carbon fiber, I'm just trying to do as much as I can. So I appreciate you watching this video. Last chance, did I forget anything? I'm not sure. I hope not. I didn't put a car on the two post, but trust me, it's a pain in the ass. I'll catch you on the next one.